Hi, it's uh, John again, and uh, today we're going to be talking about a couple of um, films that aren't American martial arts films, but the star, one of my favourite martial arts actors, Bolo Young. Um, the first one we're going to be talking about is Chinese Hercules, which is... Um, a very strange front cover of a, a digitized ball or young holding someone above his head. Um, Chinese Hercules, aka Ma Tu Da Ju Du, aka Freedom Strikes a Blow, directed by Tai Hung. Um, <coughs> quite a few different taglines this one. Um, He's the superhuman beast from the east. Chinese Hercules, he's got a crush on you. Um, anyway. Like, uh, like I would assume most people, I was drawn to buy this film because of the pictures of Bolo Young that were emblazoned all over the DVD cover, um, plastered all over it. So I kind of thought, from the mentioned pictures and the title of the film, Chinese Hercules, uh, as well as the bold statement emblazoned across the DVD box that the first and only muscle mad monster of the martial arts fights to the death, that this would be pretty much a film about Bolo Young kicking ass for 90 minutes solid. Um, however, to my disappointment, uh, Chinese Hercules is to Bolo Young what um, No Treat No Surrender is to Jean-Claude Van Damme uh, what Slaughter in San Francisco was to Chuck Norris and what Fearless Tiger was to well, Bolo Young again uh, that is uh, maximum exposure on the video or DVD box minimum actual screen time. So, is it time to go searching through the bin for the receipt? Well, not quite. <clears throat> the storyline is uh, pretty basic stuff. Um, but it's well done for what it is. Um, it's about a peaceful kung fu fighter played by a guy called Chen Hu Min. That's him there, if you can see him. Uh, he accidentally kills a man. And so, as normally happens in these kind of films, he promises never to fight again. He then runs away to work as a labourer on a pier where he impresses his co-workers with his uh, ability to lift heavy sacks. Um, this causes them to suspect him to be a formidable fighter for some reason. I don't know why they would come to that conclusion. But anyway, they, they, they suspect him to be a formidable fighter. And meanwhile, the corrupt boss of the pier has negotiated a deal, a deal with a bunch of local gangsters giving them exclusive use of the pier. As a result, the workers are thrown out on their ears and uh, forced to live on the nearby beach where they unite against their boss the gangster boss that he's doing deals with and also inadvertently the gangster boss's hulking henchman Bolo Young so yeah he plays a henchman he's not in the film a lot and yet the film's named after him I guess they were just cashing in on his popularity after he became world famous in Enter the Dragon. Of course, if anyone doesn't know, Bolo Young's real name, I think is uh, Yang Si, and he named himself Bolo Young because that was what his character in Enter the Dragon was called, uh, his most famous character. Anyway, <coughs> well, while the film is quite watchable, mainly through 
waiting for the next glimpse of Bolo, being a Bolo Young fan. I had a few problems with it. Uh, first, there's the bad dubbing. Uh, well, of course, that's a given in old Kung Fu films. But also, the film tended to drag a lot in between the various fight scenes. Um, a lot of exposure, needless talking, which he wanted, he wanted to get to the next fight scene, but it seems sometimes to take forever to get there. And as for the fights themselves, well, um, I found them to be over long, which is not always, it's not usually a problem, but when they're as kind of boring as some of the fights in this film, it is a problem. Yeah, over long, badly choreographed. I mean, apparently they were choreographed by Jackie Chan, no less. And uh, if that's true, then he improved because pretty bad. <clears throat> uh, it's badly shot, and at times uh, it's performed by people who obviously don't have any martial arts ability. Um, in fact, most of the fights in the film weren't even fights at all. They're just um, a lot of people getting beaten up without offering any resistance whilst like flailing their arms about a lot. Um, final nail in the coffin is the fact that the hero, Chen Hu Min, um, he's, he's weak. I've never seen any of the films with this guy in them, but at no point throughout the film was I rooting for him. Not only, did, not only does he look wimpy, weak, and he, 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 he looks like he's on the verge of tears at all times. He always looks like he's about to cry. Um, I just found his insistence on not fighting infuriating. I, I, I understood his reasoning, but he could have saved a lot of people, a lot of heartache, a lot of pain, if he'd just done in the start, at the start what we all knew he was going to do in the end and just fight. Um, <clears throat> the big mystery for me is why this entire community of people is pinning their last hopes on this weedy little guy they've never even seen fight before but I guess maybe they were desperate. Um, really the big saving grace of the film is the presence of Bolo. Bolo Young. Not only is he as huge and as brutal as ever, he has some great funny lines. He, the character's catchphrase, um, his boss always asks him, oh, what should we do with this guy? And Bolo's character always replies, we kill him and dump him. That's kind of his catchphrase, which is it's, it's funny. I know it doesn't sound very funny, but it's, it is funny when he says it. And, um, to be honest, he gives the rest of the cast um, a master class on how to fight on film. The guy just oozes screen presence, and you can easily see how he became a future star. Um, I mean, he makes a great villain. The guy scares the life out of me, and I'm sure I wasn't the only person to have watched this film who was actually cheering for Bolo all the way through the end fight. Um, talk about the end fight, it must be one of the most unlikely victories uh, ever committed to film. I mean, Bolo Young's been defeated by some pretty unlikely opponents in his films. I mean, he was defeated by Jean-Claude Van Damme, which I, I couldn't see that happening, personally. Um, in Breathing Fire, he was defeated by a couple of teenagers, which was laughable, really, but it's only a film. And in this film, he's just being by this skinny, wimpy, looks like he's about to cry guy. And yeah, I can't. I, I want Bowling to kick his ass, to be honest. Um, all in all, then, a below average kung fu film lifted several notches due to the presence of you know who. Um, to be honest, I've never met a person who didn't like Bolo Young. Uh, the guy's a legend. 
Overall, I would give this film 4 out of 10. And um, that's about it. That's Chinese Hercules. And I'll be back soon to review another Bolo Young film, which is Fists of Justice. So I'll, I'll see you then. Bye.